Hey everybody, we are back with another episode of Can't Stop Snapping, the official podcast of MarvelSnapZone.com. It has been a little while since we've had a new episode. Uh, we released an episode uh, Tuesday before Thanksgiving in the United States, and now we here we are the Thursday uh, after Thanksgiving, so a whole week later Thanksgiving, so nine days between episodes instead of seven, so apologize for the longer gap. Uh, I am feeling a little under the weather, so I apologize if my voice is a little scratchy as uh, we're recording this and during the recorded conversation here, uh, talking about the patch notes. Before we dive into today's episode to talk about patch notes, I just want to give context for the new cards that were added uh, to the game. Uh, as you may know, uh, with the latest patch, there's a series or a pool of four and a pool of five of cards uh, that have been added to the game. We've all been familiar with this idea of pool one, pool two, pool three. Now there's a pool four and a pool five. And once you get into uh, opening the caches and the reserves, uh, you know, you can get these cards by opening those, but they have a very low chance. Uh, for the pool four cards, it's a 2.5% chance to pull them. And with the uh, pool five cards, it's a 0.25% chance to pull them. So very rare. Uh, but with that, there is a new currency called collector's tokens that you get, and you can use those to purchase these cards. Uh, there'll be a rotating card in your shop every hour that you can buy. Uh, if you haven't unlocked all of the series or pool three cards yet, uh, those will also show up as options to purchase uh, in your uh, token shop uh, uh, every eight hours. Uh, but before we jump in, I just wanted to give a quick uh, breakdown of the, the costs, the power levels, and the abilities for the cards. We do reference some of these in the episode, and we'll obviously talk about them going forward, so I just want to make sure that you know what all the cards are. So first we have in Pool 4, we have Luke Cage. is a two-cost, one-power card that reads, Ongoing, your cards can't have their power reduced. Then we have She-Hulk, which is a six-cost, ten-power card. The ability is costs one less for each unspent energy last turn. Next, we have Titania, which is a one cost five power card. Reads, when any card is played at this location, this card switches sides. Next, we have Absorbing Man. Absorbing Man is a four cost three power card that reads on reveal. If the last card you played has an on reveal ability, this card copies it. Next, we have Maria Hill, which is a two cost three power card that reads, on reveal, add a random one cost card to your hand. Next, we have Agent Coulson, which is a three cost four power card that reads, on reveal, add a random four and five cost card to your hand. Then we have Helicarrier, which is a six cost ten power card that reads, when you, when you discard this from your hand, add three random cards to your hand. Next, we have Mbaku, which is a one cost two power card that reads, if this is in your deck at the end of the game, it jumps to a random location. Next, we have Atuma, which is a four cost 10 power card that reads, if you have another card here at the end of your turn, destroy this. And then last in pool four, we have Orca, which is a six cost nine power card that reads, ongoing, plus five power if this is your only card here. So that is all the pool four cards, which again have a 2.5% uh, drop rate in the caches and the reserves. And then with the pool five cards, we have six cards. We have Galactus, which is a six cost three power card that reads on reveal. If this is your only card here, destroy all other locations. Next, we have Valkyrie, which is a five cost three power card that reads on reveal. Set all cards at this location to three power. Next, we have Super Scroll, which reads ongoing has the ongoing effects of all enemy cards. Next, we have Shuri, which is a four, a four cost, two power card, which reads on reveal, double the power of the next card you play. We next then have Bast, which is a one cost, one power card that reads on reveal, set the power of all cards in your hand to three. And last, we have Thanos. Thanos is a six cost, eight power card that reads at the start of the game, shuffle the six infinity stones into your deck. And the Infinity Stones have a, a variety of abilities that allow you to draw more stones and draw more cards, as well as do a couple of other abilities that we will go into another time. Um, just really quickly wanted to go over those all so everybody has a little bit of context for the conversation uh, ahead in this episode and in future episodes about those new cards. So without further ado, let's jump into today's episode. 
Hey everybody, we are back with another episode of Can't Stop Snapping, the official podcast of MarvelSnapZone.com. And as always, there was a patch this week, so we are bringing you an episode breaking down the patch notes. And you know that the recurring guest and host we have here for patch notes is Loot Muncher. Loot Muncher, glad to have you back on. I have been summoned. You are here. Hey, uh, before we dive into patch notes, I know we have a ton to talk about, a ton to break down. Um... I just want to give you a second. I know that uh, QBrush happened today. I don't want you to give spoilers of who won or anything, but just give us maybe a, a 30 second recap of the drama, what happened, and give people a little incentive to go go watch the VOD. Uh, definitely go check it out at uh, QBrush events on Twitch or it'll be up on Marvel Snap Zone uh, YouTube. Should be tomorrow, hopefully. And then, uh, but yeah, super fun time. Uh, great matches had some real close ones that I will go ahead and a little bit of spoiler just to tease you. Uh, it does come down to the wire. So you definitely want to watch towards the end. It gets real tight. The, uh, the race gets real tight. Uh, will be a shout out dude too. Uh, we didn't get to see it when we were watching it, but, uh, Kawatech had a very spicy Mbaku play Ooh. too. So very, very interesting. Oh man. Well, that was probably the first spicy Mbaku play that's been made. So, uh, awesome. Well, everybody will have to go check that out. Well, um, yeah, so we're just going to dive right in. Uh, there's a ton to talk about. Now, there are a bunch of new cards with this patch, and we're not necessarily going to break down thoughts in this conversation uh, on every card, uh, but we'll probably be referencing some of those. So, listeners, as you noticed in the intro to the episode, I kind of gave you a brief overview of which uh, what each card was just for reference. So as we're talking about those cards, hopefully you have a little bit of a reference point about what each card is and what it does. So uh, diving in here, the two newest things with this patch were obviously the new cards uh, and kind of this pool or series four and five cards. So we've had pools one, two, three. Now we have a pool four and a pool five uh, that work slightly different than the rest of the pools. And then we have collector's tokens, which is a new currency. Uh, so what is that? Our fourth currency, we've got gold credits, boosters. Now we've got collector's tokens. And collector's tokens can be used to purchase uh, cards from series or pool four and five and ultimate variants, which are also a new thing with this patch. They're kind of the rarest, highest level of variant art. Uh, so we'll, we'll dive into all that a little bit more. So... Diving into general updates, um, I think this is a big one, so let's talk about this one for a second. Card boosters no longer appear as rewards from collector's caches and collector's reserves. They have been replaced by collector's tokens. Loot, we know that this has been something huge that everybody's been wanting since since uh, caches and reserves were uh, brought into the game, right? Uh, it just always felt bad to open boosters, so how do you feel about this? Yes, I, th I think this is a great change. Um, I, I know a lot of people have been uh, really down on the whole booster things. We know that, you know, hopefully they're coming out with more booster stuff. Uh, as far as I saw, they still plan on doing that. But I think this is a great first step of taking out those those big uh, let-me-downs when you open a cache and get a big thing of boosters. Um, so uh, it's a nice change, and the, uh, the collection tokens are such a good positive change. I think this even just makes it feel better. Yeah. No, I, I think everybody's happy to see that. Um, I think the one thing is, obviously, you can now open Series 4 and Series 5 cards in the reserves and caches, but it's a really low rate. I think it's 2.5% for Series 4 cards and 0.25% for Series 5 cards. So now every time I open up, uh, you know, I'm opening up and I'm getting uh, collector's tokens, which feels good, but also I'm like, dang, I, I want to open series four and series five cards right so uh, yeah I, i've i've heard some people already getting lucky i, I know a few people that's already opened two oh, wow. one what one person opened up a series five and then a series four so there you go some so, people got all the luck yeah <laughs> hopefully they share a little bit with us so <laughs> um so with that they did improve bad luck protection for the caches and the reserves so uh, basically, I, you know, they just tweak the numbers so you can only open a certain amount of uh, caches or reserves without opening a card, uh, which I think is good. Uh, just making that a, a little more friendly. I think it went from nine to seven. Does that sound right to you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I was just about to bring that up. I don't see it on here, but yeah, from where I've seen it on uh, Discord and Twitter and stuff, it's nine to seven. Yeah, 
so I, I, I think that's a welcome change. I mean, everybody's going to like that. People are going to level up faster, get a, get more cards faster, etc. So, okay. Uh, this is a nice quality of life change. When you favorite a card variant by pressing the start button above the card, you now have the option to automatically swap that variant into all decks that contain that card. Uh, obviously, this doesn't affect gameplay, but it's just a huge quality of life change, right? Absolutely. Like th- this is one thing, you know, I get a new variant or I split a card. I immediately go ahead and favor it. You know, it's the card I want. So if I do copy and paste or anything, it will put that variant I want. But now I can just do it and it'll go in all my decks. So I split arrow again. I can just hit the button and an arrow will be changed out in all my decks. I don't have to go manually do it. So that's a very nice feature. Yeah. Uh, next, we have during a game, players can now tap their opponent's avatar or their own avatar to view player titles in the pop-up avatar menu. Uh, not a ton to say there. They're just kind of iterating on the titles feature they gave us last patch, right? You can just see that a little bit more in-game. Uh, and then we have the end turn button is disabled for a few seconds when your opponent snaps. This should make it easy. This should make it harder to accidentally accept a snap. So if I'm if I'm understanding this right, so... If your opponent snaps and you haven't clicked your end your turn yet, it's gonna it's gonna basically freeze you from doing that. So you can't like your opponent snaps and you were just about to click the end turn button at the same time and it's like, oh well now I don't want to end my turn, right? Is that how you understand it? Yeah, that that that's how I understand. Yeah. So which again is is a welcome change. Um that makes it a little more I guess I should say a little less feels bad when that happens. That kind of thing happens, so uh, yeah, and it's, it's just one of those things you don't really see until you have thousands and thousands and thousands of players playing. So they, they saw it was a small change, probably had some people uh, say something about it. And it's just a nice, easy fix. And like, like, like you said earlier, just with a bunch of these, it's just a nice uh, quality of life change. Yeah. Okay, and then we've got performance improvements for app launch loading times and added support for sign-in with Apple on PC. So two uh, other changes we're welcome to have. Um, but I want to dive into the next one because this is one they kind of alluded to on the Discord, right, uh, before. This is in the art and visual effects. Infinity border visuals have been improved. Cards upgraded to infinity look way cooler, and I cannot agree more. How do you like it? I 100% agree. Way cooler is the best to describe it. Uh, I remember loading up yesterday after the patch, and uh, the patch notes hadn't hit on the client on the PC yet. So I was uh, trying to see. So I immediately went into the cards to see if I could spot any changes and immediately got sidetracked by the the new border. So I think it looks fantastic. Yeah. That's awesome. Uh, I, like, it just it looks way better than it did. And, and I always felt that uh, right before I'm, uh, Infinity is Ultra? No, what is it called with the red border? What is it's It's Ultra. Yeah, so Ultra... It, it, it was something else before, but they changed it. Yeah, so Ultra, I always thought, looked better than in Infinite, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and so it was like always kind of like, oh, well, yes, I'm going to be able to split it, but it's the purple border doesn't look as good as the red border. Um, and so now it really does look like that final evolution, that final step. It's like what you want, right? Uh, so I think that's super awesome. Um, so Flare modifiers earned from Infinity Split now have a chance to roll one of seven different colors. So basically they've iterated on, once you split a card a couple times, you get some kind of surrounding effects, flare modifiers, and those can be different colors now instead of one one color. Uh, card emojis have received a bit of polish to make them a little easier to use and see. Um, I still don't use them, and I still don't see anybody use them. I don't know about you. <laughs> yeah, I don't ever see the card emojis. Yeah, I, I honestly wonder if that's going to come out at some point. Obviously they're still iterating on it and trying to make it better for people to use, but... I maybe one in a hundred games, I see somebody use it once and I'm like, Oh yeah, that's a thing. So, uh, curious if that stays around long-term, uh, and then logos have been added to cards and location power modifiers in game, tap on a card or location to see what's modifying it. And that's something I, 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 you know, I read through the notes yesterday, but I don't think I've really noticed this in game. So I'll have to check this out. Have you, have you noticed this specifically? Uh, I actually seen this uh, a few moments ago. I was watching a streamer, and uh, they were trying to figure out how their Angela was at 14. 
because they were in throne room. So they're like, so it's seven. How's it seven? And they were very quickly like before it showed you the bus, but it didn't show you where it came from. But they were able to click on and see, oh, Nova, Nova hit it. And Mm. so it it was easy to figure out what was going on. So I like it. I like the change. It makes sense. Yep. Okay, cool. Then really quick, we've got some audio changes. New card sounds for Magic, new location sounds for Ego, Central Park, Project Pegasus, The Raft, and Death's Domain. Uh, Again, I'm guilty. I've said this to you before, Luke Muncher. More often than not, I play without sound. Just when I play, I I usually can't have the sound up. And so I haven't heard any of these. Any of these stand out or anything you've noticed with any of these? Uh, They they do sound better. I really like the Ego one. I'm not sure how to classify what it is, but it sounds... Basier, I guess. I don't know. The it says the sound effect for magic. I haven't heard that, but I've seen it played. It has a lot cooler effect in your hand mm. on turn five. It like glows this really bright red, almost like fire. Yeah, I have seen that. I've seen that. Yeah. Yeah. And I thought I thought that was really cool. I don't, I don't see it in the arts of visual thing, but I thought that was a really cool special effect they added. Yeah, I, I love that they just keep adding. Uh, these visual effects right they could just say oh well people understand the card it's done but they they keep adding and keep improving and just keep adding more to the game so really appreciate all the work going into that okay uh let's get into the beefy stuff uh i think most of these aren't a surprise maybe there's a surprise one or two that are missing i don't know we'll we'll see what your thoughts are here so these are the card updates uh angela Angela was a two cost one power card with the ability every time you play a card at her location she gets plus two power she retains the same ability but now she is a two cost zero power card okay Uh, the developer comment I think is interesting here it says Angela is a card that sees a lot of prevalence across many decks so we're nerfing her a bit to make other options more appealing what are your thoughts on this one. Uh, I I don't mind this change at all I always thought that we could see her be touched she hadn't been touched before she just is a card that i think about when i'm building a new deck if uh if if she's you know a card i want to slot in there and i still think very powerful and still going to see her in a lot of decks i think this just helps tone it down i think this patch and then kind of the past couple patches they've just been making very small precise uh changes that i I think are great and just they're really getting things where they want um so i I think it's a good change and i think it just kind of shows a sign i think with all these we'll we'll talk about all the other changes but i think they think the meta is in a good spot and they're just making very small adjustments yeah i agree with you i think uh not a ton of huge changes uh this time around um and, and i think they're just taking some of the cards with the most highly played cards and just bringing them down a little bit. I'm interested, though. Obviously, we're throwing in, what is it, 16 new cards uh, yeah. with this patch. And so, uh, who knows? Uh, it's going to take time for people to unlock those cards, right? Just like before everybody had Series 3 cards, it was hard to balance those. So, it'll be interesting to see where we're at in a month or two from now once once those cards see more play. And I think that this two of them kind of waiting like i feel like this is kind of like a wait patch like they made these small changes they feel like but they are putting 16 brand new cards into the meta so i think they really want to see how all that kind of shakes out before they make big huge sweeping changes or something like there's not even anything in my head that could use a big sweeping change but 16 brand new cards into it then you know something could break something could show up to be a problem so i think this like i said before they're just nice safe patch um tone down stuff a little bit and then just kind of wait and see and how all the new cards play out yeah no for sure uh up next we have destroyer so similar change here uh Sim- destroyer retains the same ability he destroys all of your cards at your other locations uh, but he goes from a 6 cost 16 power to a 6 cost 15 power. So same thing. A uh, lot of destroyer decks uh, out there. That's been a really good card. And so they're just dropping that one power to just hopefully even things out a little bit, right? Yep, so same thing. Just small little adjustment. Yep. Uh, so Mysterio uh, retains the same ability. He puts two illusions or one illusion at each other location. Uh, Mysterio goes from a 2-5 to a 2-4, four, 
The developer comment here says Mysterio has more power than other two cost cards because of how many slots he takes up at other locations. However, in many cases, those extra two zero illusions end up being quite beneficial. So we're lowering his base power by one. Uh, I think this makes sense. I mean, you know, he plays three times for Bishop, right? Uh, the illusions can get buffed up by things like uh, Washington, D.C. or by um, Patriot. Patriot. Or, yeah. Or, you know, you can you can eat them with Carnage, right? There's so many things. So him having the five power, maybe just... Uh, too much utility, right? Compared to other cards in the two cost pool. Absolutely. If you just look at this card versus lizard, you're just like, I, I don't understand how this is a two five and this is a two five. Yeah. Um, so I, I do think it's again, just a nice little adjustment of bringing it down a little bit. Now it's in the same kind of quality of like calling wing or something. Yep. Yep. So I think, I think that's a good change. And uh, well, I'll, I have a thought, but I'll wait until after we do the next one. Uh, so the next one is Sarah. Sarah has gone from a five cost, five power to a five cost, four power. We're seeing a pattern here, right? Uh, four cards that have all dropped by one, uh, one energy uh, or sorry, by one, uh, one power. Um, what are your thoughts on this one? I mean, Sarah, I think compared to all these ones is just a really powerful card to build around. Uh, do you think this is enough to make Sarah a little more even on the playing field? I mean, I think this definitely helps. I think I would have been okay with them trying to go a little harder with her and making her like a 5-3. I think still would have been fine. Her effect is just so powerful. And another you know, reason why I think maybe cards like uh, Angela or even um, Mysterio were hit is that they are so low cost and you can get such high power cost off of them. So if you can play Sarah on five, like you play the um, Angela and the Mysterio and all those, like you can get a lot of power really fast. So I think that's kind of all works together. So I would like, I would have liked to see them take a little bit stronger stance there. I don't think, I think the effect is very strong. I don't want them to change that effect, but I, I could have seen it at a five, three. I could still see it being dropped one more later on. Yeah, I mean, we've seen them car touch cards multiple patches in a row before, right? Um, so we could see... Uh, Mr. Negative. Yep, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, man. four. Uh, can you believe Mr. Negative was a 4-4? Four, four? That's a... It was a 4-4 four, four at one point, yeah. Yeah, wow. That's uh, it's just crazy. Uh, yeah. Um, so, yeah, my thought with that is kind of along the same lines as, as what you were saying, right? Like... Uh, a lot of these cards play together, but I think one thing is that, uh, so Angela, Destroyer, Mysterio, Sarah have all been nerfed by one, uh, attack stat, but I still think they're all very playable, right? Which is the sign of a very healthy, uh, balanced team and, you know, a patch where we're not nerfing anything out of playability, right? We're just taking the things that are slightly above level and kind of bringing them in so everything's hopefully within the same middle ground and everything sees some play right yeah absolutely i feel like that's that's probably the goal like that's probably why these are being touched by the one like you know they're saying why obviously but i'm sure these are in the their top played cards i know destroyer has only been i feel like it's only been getting stronger and i've only been seeing more of it and more of it uh, over the past like month or so so I definitely just see these are probably very highly played cards, so they realize they need to tone it down just a bit. Yep. Yep. Agreed. Okay. Uh, next we have Onslaught, and this one is interesting, uh, but I think uh, it's needed, um, and we'll talk about why. So Onslaught's ability now stacks additively with effects like Mystique or Onslaught Citadel rather than exponentially. So uh, we'll break down the math terms a little bit here. So before it worked where it was exponentially. So Onslaught um, ability doubles ongoing effects, right? So times it by two. Uh, if you added a Mystique for Onslaught or you put it on Onslaught Citadel, it would go two times two. So it would be four. And then if you add another one, it'd be four times two, which is eight. And then if you did another one, eight times two, 16. So it'd be like 16 times whatever you're doing, right? And then if you threw in Wong, it would be times another two, uh, it, it would just get out of hand, right? It'd grow exponentially, right? Uh, really too high. So now this works additively. So if Onslaught's ability doubles it 
And my understanding would be if you played Onslaught on Onslaught Citadel, then and then it would do it three times. And then if you added Mystique, it would do it four times. Is that how you understand it? As far as I'm aware of, yeah, that's how it works now. And I do think it's, uh, they say it here a little bit. Um, but I think the main reason this was changed is because players were getting stuck in like Ironheart or Hazmat animations for like 10 minutes. Yeah. Trying to resolve themselves being played like 200 times. So. I think it was the max was like, yeah, like 256 times. Yeah, 256 was the max. Uh, yeah, so you'd get stuck for 10 to 15 minutes watching an animation over and over. And the reality is like, that's not needed, right? Um, <laughs> yeah, no, if no. you Even if you can triple or quadruple an ongoing ability, right? Like Wong's ability. And then you play something like uh, Gambit, for example. Like you're still going to destroy half or more of your opponent's board, right? That's enough. You don't need to destroy 200 plus cards that aren't there on the board, right? Uh, exactly. So I, I think that's a good change. I know Binks is sad. Binks is a, a big fan of the uh, 256, and he was disappointed. Yes, a direct nerf to Binks. Yes. Uh, then uh, last thing here, Nick Fury has been added to Series 3. Um, not much to say there. Uh, well, the the only thing I'll add there that is kind of cool, it's Nick Fury. Well, I, no, he won't be the last one, um, but he, he'll be added. But then Black Panther will be added um, the week that the next season pass comes out to series five. So we will be getting the season pass cards a little faster. Mm. Um, so I, th- I think that's pretty cool. I mean, kind of like it's it's a mixed bag because you're getting it a month early. Uh, than you had before, but it's going into Series 5, not Series 3. Hey all, I wanted to take a quick moment to talk to you about MarvelSnapZone.com. Marvel Snap Zone is a one-stop shop for everything Marvel Snap on the internet. They have new articles nearly every day that cover deck building, strategy, card breakdowns, etc. They have a great collection tracker tool and a decklist builder that works off of that collection tracker so that you can know what decks you can build with your current card collection. They have guides and decklists for all level players and all collection level players. Make sure to go to marvelsnapzone.com and check it out now. So Mm -hmm. there is some difference there. Yeah, and then maybe uh, the, the wording they used is uh, I guess we should clarify this for listeners, right? So series five, series four, and then we have series three. And series three is the normal one where it's, you know, at least every seven cash is reserved, whatever. You're going to open at least one pool, three card until you have them all. Um, and then the fours and the fives are the lower percentage chance to open. Uh, but they do, they will move cards from series over time. So they'll move cards from series five to series four, and then they'll move cards from series four to series three over time. Um, so these cards will be easier to obtain as time goes on. Uh, but they, they've they said that they want that to be months, not like years, right? Uh, yeah. That obviously, we still don't know what that means, right? Is that one month? Is that three months? Is that six months? But we do know in the terms of months, we will see cards in the different uh, higher pools drop to the lower pools. So Black yeah, and- pa- Black Panther will go to Series 5, but maybe in a couple months he'll be down to 4 and then down to 3. And I imagine that's probably definitely something they will do with the season pass. Like, after a month or two, drop it back, drop down another series. Um, very interesting. And like, like you were saying, too, of figuring out, like, how long is that going to be a month, three months, six months? Um, just a little teaser for everyone. Would They have teased a December roadmap. So hopefully we'll learn more then. Yeah, no, I'm excited uh, for another roadmap. I mean, it feels like we just got the, the last one, honestly, and they've already done like half the things on that. So uh, yes. uh, we'll see. Um, I mean, really, the only other thing that they said that was like in far development that hasn't released, I think, is like the friend matches. Um, yeah, the battle mode. Yeah, yeah and uh, they've said that's coming before end of year uh, is what they said they're targeting, um, at least in some article interviews I've read. So uh that makes me think we're getting one patch, one more patch before the end of the year, right? With with that yep, feature, for sure. Okay, um, well, let's dive into bug fixes. I I was scanning here, uh, and I think there's two or three things that stand out to me here in the bugs. 
Um, and now I just got to find him again. Uh, so, um, it has to do with locations. Are you talking about the location TVA now doubles cubes? Kettle yeah. Pop so lim- limbo and, uh, limbo and, um, TVA, correct. So limbo first. Stakes will double correctly if limbo is turned into another location on turn six and ends the game, right? So limbo extends the game to seven turns. Um, and if somebody played like storm on turn six mm-hmm. on limbo and turns it into a flood- flooding location, uh, the game would obviously end on that turn, but the cubes wouldn't double properly. Now they do. Uh, so I think that's a good change. Uh, and then the other one that you just, yeah, you just had the location TVA now doubles the cube count properly on the final turn, turn four, which I think is good because that's always kind of felt bad. Um, like if it's a quick game and you're going to win and then you just get one cube if you don't snap. Yeah. Or even if, you, yeah, yeah. So uh, appreciate that. And then the other, uh, I, I'm calling this a shadow buff, but it's kind of a joke. Uh, they improved Morph's performance when he reveals. He takes less time to morph than he did. That's that's so funny. I was about to bring that up uh, just because like that parentheses is just a very funny sentence. Yeah. He takes less time to morph than he did. Yeah. Good job, Morph. Yeah. Uh, no, it's uh, that was always something that <laughs> it's made kind of hit or miss performance wise on different patches with Morph. Uh, sometimes yeah. I'm like, he sits there for, you know, two seconds and then and then changes. Uh, which, to be fair, I mean that he's trying to figure out a random card in your hand and then he's having to change, you know, do an animation and then turn into that card. Right. Uh, mm-hmm. So glad that that's a little bit more performant now. Uh, anything else that stood to you, the bugs? I, I looked through and I think most of the other ones are more, you know, visual effects that are fixed. I didn't see anything here, but they didn't mention it. But a small thing that did change uh, the credit limit is higher now. Because of the yeah. new bundle that you can buy. So uh, that already puts you way over the limit. So I don't remember exactly what the limit is. I don't think I've seen it anywhere. Uh, but it's doubled. I think it's gone from 5000 to 10000 10000 okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, let's let's talk that new, uh, that new bundle for a second. Um, okay. So the new bundle is, it's the Cyber Holiday Bundle. Uh and it is 7,500 gold. And for context, at least in, uh, we have several international listeners, so you'll have to kind of compare this to your uh, currency in your country. But in dollars, uh, it is $100 to buy 8,000 gold. So essentially you're spending, I mean, really you're going to you're gonna buy the 8,000 gold pack if you're going to buy this, right? So you're spending $100. Um and then for that $100, you get 3,000 collector's tokens, 9,500 credits, you get a variant of Apocalypse, uh, you get a, a user icon of Apocalypse the, that matches the, the variant art, and then you get 155 Apocalypse boosters, which is exactly enough to be able to fully upgrade the Apocalypse. Um, what, what are your initial impressions with this? This is obviously the biggest bundle they've done so far, and it's, you know, it's a lot more expensive uh, than the uh, some of the other things we've seen. Yeah, a little bit more expensive than the three dollar Captain American bundle. Uh, <laughs> just a tiny bit more expensive than that one. Uh, but I think it's good value. I mean, credits wise and stuff, and then you get the collector tokens. That's three series three cards, or one series four cards, or half a series five. Um, and then the boosters. I think that's kind of cool that they give you enough to just split the whole thing. The art is really cool. I don't know if it's, you know, what sell me on the bundle itself. I think the main selling point is the booster to the credits and the tokens. Um, if that's something you're looking for to upgrade your collection very quickly, fast. Um, not sure if you want to talk about this, but I know that they've been some data mining and that we can expect more uh, bundles coming up. So I do like the fact that they do, seem like now that they've kind of get things going with the tokens and hopefully with cards coming out more often that it looks like bundles are going to be a thing uh, coming out every once in a while too. So uh, I really like that. Just the, 
the ones that there because it does seem like they're going to be a different cost and give different things so um i just really like giving that option for bundles or players that do want to put a little bit of extra money into the game yeah for sure no i think that's a great point um you know the the funny thing for me so when i logged in and first saw this right uh my brain was not processing and i thought apocalypse was galactus and i was uh, like <laughs> oh my gosh you can just straight up get galactus by doing this right thinking you just get like a special variant for him. And so I was like, man, that, you know, it's crazy. And then I realized it's apocalypse and I personally never play apocalypse. And I mean, obviously you're buying it, not necessarily just for the art, right? That's the the centerpiece of this pack, but you're buying it for, you get uh, more credits for gold than you normally do. Right. And you get the collector's tokens, right. To get another series four card, for example. Right. Um, But yeah, so I, I definitely, I was a little more hyped, for a moment until I realized it was apocalypse, (laughs) but I mean, it is, it is a cool art. Um, but yeah, I think obviously I've seen some doom and gloom out there on social media, on the Facebook group, on Twitter, you know, people saying, Oh, now the game's pay to win this or that. But like people could already spend this much money and get essentially this much credits before. Right. And like, this is people have been able to buy credits and like upgrade their collections faster since the beta has started. Right. So this isn't like this new thing that's going to destroy the game. I think, you know, we always see kind of the, the vocal minority kind of come out when things like this happen and, and say that the world is ending, but I I really don't think that's the case here. I think, uh, yes, I'm not saying this for everyone and I'm not trying to say, you know, a hundred dollars isn't a lot of money and I'm not even saying I'm going to buy it, but I don't think this really gives an unfair advantage um, personally, because, uh, you know, people could already buy, uh, you know, gold and then use that gold to buy credit. So this isn't really changing that. And, um, you know, I think Marvel snap is a very balanced game and it allows you to unlock cards in a balanced order. Also, you know, if you kind of learn the ins and outs of the, the game and you use your skill, like I think anybody really can win at this game. So, uh, with the cards you have, so I, I don't think this is uh, the end of the world uh, or pay to win. Uh, I don't know if you agree, disagree. I'm assuming you agree. No, I, I I definitely agree. If if it was what you thought it was at first, if it was everything in the patch is the way it is of how rare it is to get Galactus and all that stuff in your pool, your collector tokens and stuff. If this was Galactus and you could just buy it and get all this stuff, like then we might have can talk about pay to win and all that stuff. If they're looking like brand new cards behind a bundle, something like this, but it would being a, you know, a card that you can get up. It's what series one series two, something like that. Like it's not series three, right? No, it's not. Yeah. Yeah. So I think this is perfectly fine. Like I said, in my eyes, I see it as this is here for people that want to spin it. that want the art or the credits or the tokens or, you know, whatever the, the, the boost is to your account that you want. Um, it's there and it's definitely not mandatory. Like I don't think at all that you're going to be falling behind or whatever. You're missing out too much. If you don't buy this bundle, this is just here for people that want to buy it. And it's a way for them to keep, you know, bring in revenue for the game. So they can keep doing these awesome patches and keep working as hard as they do. So I'm completely fine with stuff like this. Like it's a cool variant. It's a nice little boost to your, account um so i'm completely fine with it yep agreed well well Luke, much before we kind of close out here i just want to get your thoughts are there any one or two cards that you were surprised to not see on the buff or the nerf list this this go around nothing off the top of my head i've we've talked every patch now um but uh i would love to see some buffs like i understand that i, I do feel like this was a safer patch of them just nutting cards down a little bit. But surely, on the other hand, they have the same list of underplayed cards, least played cards, and seeing some kind of even like cost reduction or power boost to some of those cards. Just a few, but maybe that's coming, or maybe they don't think that's really needed. Maybe they think bringing these cards down will help bring the other cards up. But I personally love to see buffs. So I would like to see more buffs. But, uh, yeah, I think this patch was fantastic. Just a big feature into the game. And uh, I, I don't think they missed anything with any cards. Like, I think the meta's in a pretty good spot. Yeah. 
Yeah, I agree with you. I mean, we love to see buffs, and, and I still think we'll see some. I think they've shown they want every card to be playable, and I still think there are a couple cards that just really aren't great. Uh, crossbones. Uh, I mean, that's not it's not only crossbones, but there's just a couple that just uh, compared to other cards in their in their cost area, uh, they're just not as good, and you don't see a lot of play with them. And so, uh, I think there will be a couple more tweaks we see. I, I do think that um, as, as time goes on, crystal buff win. Yeah, I, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, nobody plays crystal, right? They've got to like have a number that's like crystal well, is that like. I don't even feel like they really need to like touch her stats. Just give her the Ultron treatment. Just make her like she was before, where it doesn't matter what lane you play her in. Yeah. Crystal, Quake, um, Crossbones, I think, are the three I see the least. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Okay. Well, awesome. Uh, this is always, uh, as always, has been a great conversation, Luke Muncher. Uh, always great to break down the patch notes. As you've kind of alluded, I mean, we've got, We've got a new season pass coming in a week, right? So uh, we will have, uh, there's going to be more things to talk about uh, coming here soon. We So we just got a bunch of new cards. We're going to get another new card next week. Uh, I'm interested to see once we get to the point where we have a new card per week. Is that January? Is that February? Time will tell. Uh, but before we jump off here, just uh, give the listeners one more shout out where they can find you, uh, where they can find QBrush, and how they can uh, make sure to catch up on those videos. Absolutely. So you can find me at Loot Muncher Zero uh, on Twitch and Twitter. Um, don't stream too much now myself. I'm more focused on the Q Brush events. Uh, but you can find me at Twitch on there at Q Brush Events and same name over at uh, Twitter. And then if you can't watch the vi- uh, the Q Brushes that we do every Wednesday, uh, we are partnered up with Marvel Snap Zone, and they put it on their YouTube usually the day after. So you can always go check it out there. Awesome. Yeah. So by the time this podcast episode is live, you should be able to catch that VOD from the uh, Q-Brush this week. So make sure to go check that out. And we will catch you all in the next episode. Can't Stop Snapping is a podcast written, recorded, produced, and hosted by Michael Thurman. Thanks for listening.